Okay, our final feature this week is a movie called Blackberry. It comes out in theaters Friday, May 12th, opens nationwide. It is directed by Matt Johnson and co-written by Matt Johnson and Matthew Miller. Matt Johnson is a person I know thanks to Anderson Cowan. I think, I'm assuming Bruce Perky and Eric Holmes have heard of Matt Johnson or maybe have seen his previous movies, Operation Avalanche and also The Dirties. Anderson has always praised Matt Johnson on his DIY work ethic and his indie filmmaking. We mentioned indie porn earlier this year. This is one of these indie filmmakers that I know Anderson loves. I don't know about Bruce and Eric if they're passionate about it, but Johnson helms the movie Blackberry and it centers on the creation of the Blackberry through two different people. And I, I've got to look up the names on on these two individuals. Jay Bearshell plays the the tech guy. He's the the one who creates it along with his buddies. One of his best friends in the movie is played by Matt Johnson, who is the aforementioned director. And also the aforementioned Glenn Howerton. Am I correct on that? Mm-hmm. Here it comes. Yeah. He is the C, the co-CEO of Blackberry. I, I I think they're not called Blackberry. They they developed they created Blackberry, but they their company is called, I think, Research in Motion or something like that. Yeah, RIM. Uh, Rim, yes, Rim. So Rim, the company that created BlackBerry. So it really follows it, the, that whole rise and fall of the BlackBerry via the uh, the POV of the people at Rim, specifically those two co CEOs. Eric Holmes, why don't you take it away regarding BlackBerry? Did this movie work for you? This movie is comes at a very breakneck speed. I don't know if it was shot on film or digital, but anyways, Eric, take it away. Uh, probably both. Th- this movie's fantastic. It's uh, it's some of my favorite parts of primer some of my favorite parts of social network uh some of my favorite parts of the office british one or the american one it, it it's funny but it's it's also this does the thing that i was kind of uh wishing the tetris wouldn't first of all the the story in tetris is very much more interesting because it's so crazy this one's kind of a story you've heard before it's just really well done but where this shines above t- something like tetris is there's no useless uh subplot there's no uh uh car chase at the end that you don't need it's just it's the point a to point b and also and this probably just has to do with maybe this is how it it was this is kind of a morality or a tale about uh ambition uh glenn howerton's character is very ambitious what's the director's name the the guy matt johnson been? matt johnson oh, doug. and he plays doug in the movie yeah, yeah. So Doug is not ambitious at all, and Jay Baruchel is—he wants to be ambitious. But he's kind of caught in the caught in the middle. So normally, how this movie kind of plays off is um, Glenn Howerton's character comes in, and he's the one that kind of uh, wheels and deals, and sl- like uh, like the founder with my, he he would be Michael Keaton's character in the founder to come in, take over the company, and screw everyone else over. And you find out pretty quick, at least halfway through the movie that that's not the case you know he's investing in this he wants the company to do well and he's he's an a-hole but he's an a-hole because doug is and all the people working at rim are just so they don't care and jay Baruchel, he wants to he wants to make these things he wants to get his company going and his uh his buddy is just constantly being a, a roadblock for him and so it, it's got a the dynamic of it's a, a little different than what you might expect of a movie like this. It gets really funny. There's a bunch of parts early on where Doug's like doing the the part in the movie where he's sticking up for his buddy against Glenn Howerton, and Glenn Howerton is just throwing daggers at him with his eyes. And I'm right there with Glenn Howerton. I just wanted to choke the hell out of Doug, going, "You idiot! What the hell are you doing? You know stuff like that." As the movie goes along, and as uh, and another great thing about this is, hey, Greg, do you have a BlackBerry? I I used to have a very good question, Eric. I used to have, I, I, I used to love a BlackBerry. Current, currently, you got a BlackBerry. Bruce, no. you got a you got a BlackBerry. I have one in a box somewhere. So it's no spoiler to say that BlackBerry didn't. It took off at one point, but it's not there currently. This is also not a uh, rags to riches. It's a rags to riches back to rags story. And like, so pretty much everything about this movie is not typical for this type of movie and everything about it. I just absolutely love. And it, it freaking moves. Like I'm, I'm just constantly in, you know, it's got, it, it scratches that, uh, lawyer itch, uh, words that aren't working for me. <laughs> but the, no, the, it, 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 courtroom, the, courtroom drama, courtroom, yeah, like, the courtroom drama itch. It, it, it's not a courtroom drama movie. 
but it still has that same kind of thing. And all the stuff that they, you know, they're constantly talking over or normally would be talking over the audience's head. So now you have to have scenes where you have two people that know exactly what they're talking about, explaining things that they know exactly what they're talking about. They don't have that in this because a lot of what they're doing, they're inventing stuff. So even though they're the people are knowledgeable about this they still have to run things by each other because they're inventing new technology so that's a, another great way to bring the audience into what it is they're doing you're not going to understand all the lingo but you're going to you're going to catch on enough to be able to follow what's going on everything about this movie is fantastic i love it and 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 the soundtrack very great the score is very great any movie that has a slint song in it automatic <laughs> three stars above what it would normally be so actually it's probably close to eight star bagger 7.9 8.9 this might be a 9.9 star (laughs) just for the slint song alone before before we get to bruce's review let's just mention and i should have mentioned this glenn howerton plays jim balsilli balsilli and jay baruchel is mike lazaridis I don't even know if I should say it's inspired or based upon a true story. It's a true story on, on Blackberry. I don't know what fictional elements they might have embellished upon. I don't know the specifics, but all that uh, cast aside, Bruce, your thoughts on Blackberry. Uh, uh, real, real quick, yes. Greg. Um, a lot of the Glenn Howerton's character is very close to his character on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I don't know what the real guy is like, but I'm guessing a lot of that is might not embellished. Be Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the way that he, the way that he blows up, the way he does. Okay. Cool. Cool. Bruce? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's true. I, I don't know, but that, that's what <laughs> I would suspect. Very cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I like this movie quite a bit too. I don't like it as much as Eric, and I think that it's more of a taste thing in this one for me. So I guess I'll talk about some of the things. I mean, so everything he says is right, and it, in like a comedy to me. The things that didn't work for me are just more tone things than actual like story things. The story thing totally works. It's totally moves all those things he said. The things that are kind of weird for me and and this is could be absolutely just me. You know when you see those movies and it's about a band or something and then the they they try to recreate the band and something like you have it doesn't seem quite right to you or it seems a little bit like dress up. This movie has a little bit of that. It feels like dress up kind of thing to me like I, I there's a lot of wig work in this movie <laughs> or lack of wig oh. work or shaved head work going on yeah and that i was unfortunately i was constantly distracted by that and i understand why it's there i understand they're trying to recreate the time but it kept pulling me out of the reality of it uh same thing with like the shaky cam they do tons of shaky cam i totally get why it's there it's the time that's what everything was back then it was all shaky cam so it's kind of it's kind of self-referential to the period but at the same time it kind of just bothered me a little bit and then the other thing that kind of bothered me a little bit was um things like hey these guys are really nerds right and yes they were nerds and they were very hardcore nerds but like hey look Doug, every time you see him, it's going to have a different video game shirt on. Look, he's got Doom. You know what Doom is. Oh, oh, look, now he's got this other one on. Oh, oh, now he's got, you know, uh, Mortal Kombat. And it, and like all that stuff was like, maybe that was true to life. But it, it just, once again, it felt a little bit like dress up and trying to like really tell the audience like how nerdy these guys are. And look what we're at. We're at the 90s. Woo-hoo! So it was a little too goofy and in your face for me overall. I still liked it. I'll still recommend it. It's still solid for me, but it doesn't, that holds it back for me, for my full enjoyment. I was constantly pulled out and like, I wasn't in the moment of the movie. I was watching, it felt like a reenactment, you know, as mm-hmm. opposed to an actual movie that was immersing me. I, I will push back a little bit on the uh, the shirts and stuff because it's it completely accurate to the time. Well, might but it was, say, it was might, so might say, trying to push say, it at me. Might, might even say completely accurate to now. However, uh, the, <laughs> the hair... Yes. Uh, Glenn Howerton's <laughs> shaved head was like, because th- there, you know, people, you know, Bruce, you got a, you got a nice bald head and it, it's got a, it's got a certain look to it, but it looks natural. It's it like good. shaved. <laughs> but when you, when you shave it, like if I were to shave my head down to look like yours, it would look. So it would look like a shaved head. <laughs> yeah. That, mm. that, I, I, I mean, 
they, they could have done a little bit with that, but <laughs> that, that, but I that almost would, feel that like would, that would for sure distract. I think me. it's an aesthetic though. I'm not saying, I'm saying that I think that's the aesthetic they wanted in this. I don't yeah. think it was like, I don't think it was like, it, it was just an aesthetic. That's why I'm saying it's like comedy. This is the movie it wants to be. It's not mm -hmm. like it, they're yeah. doing a bad job doing that. It's just, right. it didn't quite work for me. I wanted it to kind of be just tweaked a little bit the other way. But once again, it just pulled me out from being like your level of like super enthusiasm for it. I think your assessment of it is actually on point, Bruce, because of the whole thing with that the wig jay bearshell's wig my, my class it's, such is, a wig. <laughs> it's just such a wig and uh glenn howerton's bald head like eric was saying it's just it, and you see the side hair it, it's just it's, it's just so out there and but it's part of the whole i mean it's intended right it's it's part of the whole in your it is yeah dynamic and then all those all those shirts some people it might annoy people like, that there's so many video game shirts and so many references but other people will glom onto it as as well this i don't think this is going to happen and i haven't seen i don't watch it's sunny it's always what is it uh, eric it's always sunny in philadelphia is that the name of the mm -hmm. show yeah, yeah. Glenn Howerton, I've interviewed him a couple of times for this movie, uh, this series he did called AP Bio, but this is not, again, this is not going to happen, but Howerton delivers, I think, one of my favorite films, uh, one of my favorite performances of the year. It's such a great performance, and it's a it's a performance I, I think I would watch over and over again just for his monologue and just the, <laughs> yelling at people. It's really funny. I think he's really, really good in this movie. I think this movie is excellent right across the board. I wouldn't give it 8.9 stars, but for me, performance and Jay Baruchel is excellent in this movie. I think this is the best I've seen him. I'm... I, I always love I always love my my Jay Baruchel, but he's great as a. You see Mike Lazaridis's character arc throughout the movie. I'm not going to say what happens to him, but there's a very really well rounded character with his yeah. with Jay's character. Really loved it. Also, if you're a fan of Sal Rub Sal Rubinek, as well as Carrie Elwes, they have some really good supporting roles. Michael and let's not Ironside. forget. And let's not forget Michael Ironside as Purdy as the heavy who is uh, who is recruited to, to, sort of late in the game. Very very good movie. I think I really loved it. Eric, you wanted to say? Yeah, I was, well, Michael Ironside first of all doing his best Stacy Keach, and it was glorious watching that. But uh, just... Jay Baruchel, so his character, I knew he was in the movie. I didn't realize that was him until like wow, uh, probably like fifteen minutes. I, I was like, God, that guy looks familiar. Is that like is that Michael Bolton from Office Space? Who is that guy? Like I thought, I thought it was him, and then I kind of stopped it and was like looking up the IMDb, and it's like, okay, Jay Baruchel's gonna pop in at any point. I wonder what he's gonna be. I'm looking for the guy that played Michael Bolton in Office Space, and I'm not seeing him on the cast list anywhere. I'm like, wow. Oh. So I went back, to, you know, played the movie again, and then slowly dawned on me. I was like, oh, that is Dave Baruchel or uh, Jay Baruchel. Jay Baruchel. <laughs> yeah, very, uh, very he's good. this is probably the best I've seen him in, and Glenn yeah. Howerton, he's great in this too, but. I mean, I, I've seen him be great and it's always sunny. So that didn't surprise me at all. But uh, yeah, Jay Baruchel is fantastic. And uh, also the story itself, what happens to both of these figures as well as the employees of our, what like uh, Eric was saying, Rim. It's interesting to see what happens afterwards. There's a little bit of a very quick postscript, but well, it makes me want to actually read up more on Mike Lazaridis and Jim Basili as well. A very interesting movie. Blackberry, Bruce Perky, your rating. I will probably go four stars on this one, but I do want to mention one last thing because I kind of made it sound more negative than I really am on this movie. No, uh -huh. I want to mention that the very last moments of this movie are so perfect. Yes. It's so perfect. And it, it takes all the goofiness and it just narrows it down to one little tiny character moment. And all I'll say is it's a character looking at some product and the way yes. that goes down is, is perfect. It is very, very perfect. Very good point, Bruce. Thanks for uh, mentioning that. I'm get, I'm gonna get um, let Eric have the last rating. I'm just gonna say boring, boring rating for me. Five star banger for me for BlackBerry. Loved it all the way, and I'm sure Eric <laughs> loved it more than me and Bruce. What's your 9. rating on BlackBerry? Boy. So I, I was going to go five-star banger, but then I remembered that Slit was in it, which, well, so five-star banger, but then you have the shaped head, which kind of takes it down like not four and a half, but just like <laughs> 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4.9 banger. But then that Slint song shoots it right up to 6.9 star banger. So I, 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 I watched this movie and then I put it on again later on that day. Like I, I will watch this movie. This is like social network or uh see job. Like th this is like an Aaron Storkin movie for me. I will watch the hell out of this. Anytime. This was a good week for you, Eric. Right? Oh yeah. 
<laughs> so, yeah, some... <laughs> banger season is among us. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Again, that is 6.9 star banger from Eric Holmes. As I usually do, I'm going to narrow that down to five stars because I'm a horrible sensor. I'm horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it five stars and Bruce gives it four stars. And he even liked it so much. He wanted to say, I'm not being negative with my review. That's yeah. Much... <laughs> I had to like, sorry, I'm not being mean to you. Come on now. <laughs> well, let's see. How many times have I seen Bruce do that in three and a half years? Never. So that's, really, that's how good BlackBerry is. So very good, Bruce, that with your four-star rating.